What is going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. In this one, we are flying the UH-1 Huey, which in my humble opinion is probably one of the most fun, if not the most fun module from a purely flying perspective in DCS. Uh, it is so much fun, it's so rewarding, it's so challenging, and if you get it right, this thing is an absolute riot. And this is coming from a guy who loves jets, fixed wing, fast jets, blowing stuff up, etc. Um, this is incredible. Uh, just just flying low level, especially around the Mariana Silence map, which is where we are today. Um, as you'll see, it is just sensational. So let me explain to you what it is we're doing. I mean, first of all, um, the format for this video is going to be a little bit different. Unlike my normal videos, this is going to be running full time from start to finish, uh, from startup to shutdown. And uh, it's a fun little mission that I've designed for landing practices in various different landing zones, uh, confined landing zones, ships, uh, various different places. And it's all around uh, this area, which I'm going to show you. Uh, we are currently on the island of Guam. Uh, so this is where we are, Anderson Air Force Base out there to the northwest. Uh, over here, there is a sort of kind of disused airfield called Alpha Orte, uh, even though you'll see a couple of C-130s here uh, are uh, unloading their cargo, uh, doing some short field uh, landing, uh, off field uh, almost uh, practice. Uh, we're stationed here on the most uh, western helipad in our UH-1. And our mission today, unfortunately, the waypoints don't work. Uh, I don't know, it's just a DCS thing as usual. Some, yeah, it's buggy. Uh, so we're going to take off, do a little lap around the helipads here and head out uh, very close to a oil support vessel here, which is docked uh, at the stock here. It's getting loaded. Uh, it's probably one of the easiest landing zones. They've got a big helipad there on the nose uh, with uh, no obstacles uh, to avoid. And it's, it should be fairly straightforward to get us to get us going and see how accurately uh, we can get it uh, landing on the H on the pad there. And then we are going to be heading out a little bit north here there's a big oil tanker called handy wind uh, there is a helipad on it so a little bit more confined it's in between a couple of cranes so it'll be a bit more of a challenge after that head out uh, just a little bit further up here to a warehouse and this is going to be uh, a lot more challenging because you'll see this is a very confined landing zone um, it may not look like it from here but you'll see when we get there it's very very tight so trying to make it there is going to be tough. Uh, after that, we are going to continue uh, out uh, towards south across the bay uh, and across the naval base uh, down to a friend's house, uh, old uh, army buddy. Uh, he's got his Humvee over here and you'll see this is a kind of confined area to try and land in. Uh, which has got some flower pots there. We need to make sure we don't knock those over. Uh, then we're going to turn back around and head back up uh, north to another uh, buddy's house. And uh, this time we're going to be doing a rooftop landing. This is probably going to be the most challenging one out of all of them. Uh, we've got some uh, wires running across here. Uh, uh, alongside of the road and uh, may not be obvious from here but this is going to be a real challenge we need to make uh, our approach from the south uh, there's a little bit of the roof that steps out here uh, it's surrounded by four cones and we need to try and uh, get it in there and then swing it around and and land it in between them so it, it's 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 gonna be fun it's gonna be fun and the scenery and the level of detail in the Mariana Silas map is just absolutely sensational uh, after that we are going to be heading back up north uh, to land on the helipad and that should be our little mission for today so without further ado let's get her started up and uh, get going we have two good engines so you're clear to disconnect the headset we'll see you on the left with the pin thanks a lot All right, folks, let's fire up. So let's close the doors and uh, get going. Mm, AC phase, let's put that generator, it says bus. Cool. Let's cancel that. Fuel. Dun, dun, dun. Right. Uh, if I'm butchering the start, by the way, those of you that do know how to fly this thing properly, please make sure to tell me. Uh, let's get the lights set. What else do we need? Right. It's looking pretty good, I think. Uh, so, let's set the throttle. This is 
always a little bit finicky, I find. So, let's find that point we need for start. There we go. Perfect. Uh, cool, right, lights are on. We are good to go. Fire test done. Alright, let's go. Let's fire her up. Collective is down. Quite a bit, this thing. Alright, let's just start advancing the power very gently. Now, I'm not sure if you're supposed to hold it at idle for a little while or, or not, um, just to warm it up. So, again, please feel free to, to tell me. there. Alright, let's set the uh, squawk. Let's get the radios on. Even though we're not using them for this mission, but anyway. It's nice to be scientific. Uh, right, inverter. Radio altimeter, actually, we need to turn that on. Okay, so. There we go. Alright, set. Get the uh, heading adjusted, so. Looks like it is around about 140 degrees. It's around about there. Cool, reset the master caution. Let's do a very quick scan down here. That looks great. Governor is not an emergency. It's fine. Uh, right, lights are looking good. Oh, pedo heat. Uh, come on. Uh, yeah, looking marvelous. Right. So, uh, I think we should uh, get in the hover. Do a little uh, hover torque check. Get used to it. If you are struggling to hover the Huey, I suggest being super relaxed because it's really easy to just grip the handle. And, uh, there we go, that's looking pretty good. Uh, right, torque check. That's good, okay. Right, let's spin around here. And just do a very quick lap around the helipads. Uh, if you see some FPS losses here, I do apologize. It will be very occasional, I promise. Um, but it's just because it's the Marianas Islands map, and it's just the way it is. Uh, it's just got too much scenery on it, basically, plus me sticking all these extra objects. I just doesn't like it. Uh, and on top of that, I am recording with the NVIDIA Shadow Play, which is not very helpful. Um, so, anyway, uh, let's head out here, first of all, to this oil support vessel that's docked here. You'll see this is the bay out there, um, is Handy Wind, that's going to be landing on as well. But as you can see, this ship has a fairly big landing pad, um, but no obstacles or anything like that around it, so it should be a nice easy one to start off with for all the more challenging ones that we've got coming up very soon. And as you can see, they're loading it with all sorts of stuff, so the military has uh, contracted this out. So let's just swing it around. We're coming from the north. Uh, see how accurately we can get it uh, on that H. Get it. The H there. Let's see. 
bit, bit of a messy touchdown, but let's have a look. Mm, it's not the best. Yeah, I mean, it's not the best. Be a lot better than that. But anyway, it was a good practice for the first one. Uh, let's bring her back up. And uh, head towards Handy Wind. One thing I will say, hovering the Huey, I mean, it's always a bit of a challenge, but um, if you have a VR headset, oh my god, it is so easy. You can hover it on a dime, and I mean it, and just even having that peripheral vision, even though it's restricted in VR compared to real life, but still, um, it makes a huge difference. Uh, so here's Andy Wind, by the way. Uh, the helipad is right in the middle of the ship there. You'll see it's between the two grades. So let's um, see if we can land on this one. better. It's better. It's a little bit squinty, I would say, but it's overall, I think... Yeah, I give myself a solid 7 out of 10 for that one. That one's too bad. Better than the uh, better than the other one. Uh, right, cool. Let's, uh, let's get her going. Now head around to the warehouse. See, this one will be a little bit more challenging. And in case you're wondering, yes, I have placed those navigation boys uh, around the harbor. There's a seagull there. So yeah, like I was saying, in VR, um, in VR, flying helicopters, for one, it's freaking amazing. Uh, but unfortunately, you just don't get the, um, you can't have the level of detail that you can in 2D. It's here, so you can see things just look really pretty and bright and really cool. So you can see, there's our little landing pad there. It's uh, just <laughs> between those kind of bunk, uh, not bunk, between the uh, containers. the vehicles. So we we'll have to kind of swing it round. We we'll have to swing it round here and there's a couple of Hummers there. So we're just landing in front of the Hummers if that makes sense. So you see the, the cones. Uh, so let's see. In fact, let's, let's, let's our, set ourselves up a little bit better. I don't like that one. Swing the tail out to the uh, to the right there. When we get here. All right, so good. Pretty good. So just a little bit. Tail out. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. I'd say a little bit messy. overall I think. I mean my main concern was the tail rotor uh, and we're definitely we're definitely well clear so you can see this is where the cones are. Uh, 
yeah, I'd say we're kind of bang in the middle, really. I think that's pretty good. I think that's... Yeah. Yeah, I'm happy with that. It's a good performance. Uh, right, let's uh, get out of here. Let's head round for the final, uh, probably most challenging landing zone for today. First of all, let's get out of here. Right, between these bushes. 
I'm flying low level in between trees as well. So Probably gonna see some stuttering here and there now, just because we've got so much scenery ahead of us, and all these trees are not doing us any favors in terms of FPS. So I do apologize about that. But yeah, as I was saying, I have a 90 millimeter extension, which has two effects in terms of increasing the precision you've got with flight controls. Uh, it goes for helicopters and airplanes, but it's extremely valid for helicopters. Because in general, if you look down there, helicopters have very long kind of like sticks uh, or cyclics, I guess, but you know, like the, the actual thing that holds the handle to the floor. Uh, it's quite long because it gives you quite a lot, a lot of throw in terms of precision. Um, and having a, an extension um, for your stick increases the amount of travel it has, so therefore a little bit more precision there. And also, it gives you more precision in terms of, uh, because the controls are a bit lighter, so less force involved, so you don't have to strain your arms. So, like, when I hover, I don't use the trim. Um, but if you have a regular uh, Warthog stick, then it's very difficult to pull that trim, you know, because you're straining your arms so much. Um, so, I do highly recommend it if you can, if you can get it. Uh, obviously, I've got a center stick, so it's between my legs. Right, so this is the rooftop we're landing at. You see the two Humvees down here? You see the roof extends, it's got four cones on it. Uh, just underneath us now. So uh, we're gonna have to come in and you'll see there's there's wires um, along the road. So this is gonna be, I think this is the most challenging one. So we gotta come in from this angle here in the south. And bear in mind, I'm not a helicopter pilot, so those of you that are, please, Tell me if there's better techniques for setting yourself up and landing coming in and so on and so forth. So, uh, right, let's see. It's going to go straight here. That was that was messy. That was messy. That was not good. Um, my personal opinion. That was not cool. Uh, and as you can see, we're a bit squinty as well. But we got it down. Like I say, 2D just a little bit more difficult because you haven't got that depth of perception and you haven't got peripheral vision. Uh, anyway, I think that's pretty good overall. I mean, we didn't make it. I think we. I think we were safe. Um, but yeah, it just just wasn't that nice. Uh, anyway, right. Let's get out of here. Head uh, head back to the. Uh, to the LZ. Alright. Or to the helipad, I should say. Alright, let's, uh, let's swing up around here to be safe. Trees on that side. Alright. There's a tree here. We'll go up vertically. Sweet. Alright. Sweet. And the cool thing about the Marianas Islands is that there are so many cool little landing zones you could create for yourself. Literally anywhere you look, anywhere you go, like you can just create yourself, like even just down there or you know, it's just amazing. Literally it's freaking amazing. Like the amount of cool places you can try and land on. Um, and squeeze in between two little bits here or there or whatever it is. Uh, it's just so cool for practicing like, you know, tactical kinda drop-offs and, uh, and that kind of stuff. It's, it's just bad. This is what I mean, just flying low level in the UE is freaking amazing. This is the business. Tree top. But like I say, I don't fly the Huey very much, so I'm definitely not a pro. I mean, I don't think I'm the worst UV pilot in the world, in other YouTube videos, definitely, but uh, it just in terms of its systems and everything, I, I mean, I, I'm not claiming I'm not to know anything, or certainly anything about, you know, how to do 
you know, things properly in terms of flying or landing or whatever. I just kind of figure stuff out looking at you kind of, I don't know, real world videos and kind of what I think is right, but I, I'm not really educated in this at all. So unlike with some of my airplane videos where I can categorically tell you do this or do that, um, yeah, I'm not going to pretend that I know anything with the helicopter, but I do love flying it. This is, <laughs> this is so much fun. Actually, I genuinely mean it. Um, if I had to keep one module in DCS, somebody put a gun to my head and said, you know what, you gotta delete all modules, but you gotta keep one. I seriously, <laughs> seriously think it might be the Huey. Um, it's just, it's just too much fun. However, if I didn't have the Marianas Islands map, I may well not choose the Huey, just because other maps are, even the Syria map is just nowhere near as exciting as this. Uh, right, let's, uh, let's come in and kind of face in sort of similar direction that these helicopters are facing. Do a little tactical approach here. And again, I don't know if this is the proper way of doing this, but I find kind of swinging around like this, killing energy, seems to work really, 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 really well in the helicopter. Alright. So get ourselves to the H. Prettiest. These last two are not the prettiest. Also, what is that? That's really squinty. Gah. Anyway, anyway, I think that was okay. Um, practice makes perfect. But anyway, I think that's it. Let's uh, let's shut her down. I think this this was enough for this one mission. I did also consider doing some auto rotations, but I think I'll save it for another video. Just to keep this one not too long, because I think this was already kind of entertaining the way it was. I hope. Anyway, so uh, yeah. Let's uh, power this puppy down. This throttle's coming down. And let's switch that warning off because that's good yet, right? So I think the idea is you're sort of supposed to let it spool down, then let it idle for a little bit, uh, for two minutes or so, and then shut the rest of the systems down. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, if you guys haven't got a Huey or if you haven't been flying any hel helicopters in DCS, my god, this thing is freaking amazing. But like I say, if you don't have a stick with an extension, it is a little bit more challenging, so don't feel too frustrated. In case you think it's very, very difficult to hover, especially in 2D, not 3D, not in VR. Um, that's just the way it is. Uh, but anyway, let's uh, shut this one down. Okay. Let's get, a, get rid of the fuel. And uh, feel free to tell me what is, uh, you know, the proper procedure for shutting it down. I don't know if there's a good video. I haven't really come across any good shutdown videos. Um, in fact, I haven't really come across any really good, like, startup procedure videos for uh, the Huey as well. Uh, I, and I mean, like, a scientific one, you know, where somebody says, right, this is what you're looking for, this is right, this is wrong. Like a real Huey pilot would do, you know, that'd be more interesting. There's quite a few out there, but I'm not really convinced that they're, you know, the most realistic. Um... I do love the way it shakes. Some of these things, like, I mean, this is an old module, right? And I think when you look back here, you realize, yeah, this this could be updated, right? But everything, and also I think these circuit breakers are a bit, uh, I guess they're okay. I think this panel could get updated. But generally, everything you see here, and 3D pilot bodies, and the instrument panel, I think it all looks freaking ace. I think it looks really cool. Uh, right, let's, uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. let's get rid of all this stuff. We don't need the heat of heat. Uh, lights can come off. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. Inverter can come off. Wind that down. The cool thing about the Huey as well is that I think no matter whether you're a beginner or not, um, in terms of operating like the systems, it's so simple. It's great. You can you could be up and running within a day, and you literally know all the systems inside. Well, I say know all the systems inside out, but certainly in terms of operational stuff, you'll know 
everything I believe there is to know uh, in terms of ooh, wrong way. Uh, what else? Yeah, I think that's I think that's about right. Cool, I think that's about right. Um, yeah, I think this uh, the systems are just so accessible, uh, and it's great because you'll be able to you know basically utilize a hundred percent of this helicopter. Uh, within a very short period of time, which is great because if you jump into something very complex like, um, let's say maybe the hind, which uh, by the way, I, I, I don't know how to fly very well, but I assume it's got a lot of systems. Uh, or, you know, if you're doing fixed wing stuff, if you jump into a, a Hornet or something, I mean, you've got basically years of learning ahead of you. If you want to get anywhere near being able to ut utilize, you know, 100% or anywhere near 100% like a real fighter pilot would. Um, but where's the Huey? My God, you can really, you know, you can learn this thing quick. And um, yeah, and it's so much fun. Uh, so anyway, I'll stop rambling on. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, uh, please make sure to smash the living daylight out like button. Subscribe for future videos if you could. And please let me know below if you have enjoyed this kind of format of, you know, basically start to finish. You know, uh, I understand this video is going to be a little bit longer than normal. So if you want to have a shorter video and really compress it all down to kind of the cool moments, just the landings, you don't want to have any kind of boring transits between landing zones or, you know, equivalent in other videos. Uh, please make sure to comment down below and I'll uh, potentially do some shorter videos. But if you have enjoyed this one, then please do make sure to smash the living daylight out of the like button. Subscribe for future videos and hopefully I'll catch you in the next one. Adios.